Hey guys, this is Captain May from Bitten Apple TV in conjunction with it came from the radio. We are here at CranoCon and we're trying to get in tune with Mike Lopez. I'm sorry. I'm really corny with a lot of jokes. Uh, <laughs> I can't help it. Um, but the joke's on you. Uh, <laughs> um, tell my viewers more about what is it you guys uh, do here. Um, we've been chasing you guys, stalking them um, for like three, two, three, maybe four or five cons. You didn't know we were behind the bushes, like watching you guys. But for my viewers who are like now just seeing, like, oh, that's why they were stalking them. Tell them all about you. All right, so um, this is our program. It's called Get In Tune with Comic Clubhouse. And what this is really was a collaboration between uh, myself and Michael Grazia. That's Michael Grazia up there, that little guy. Um, and so he has this app called Get In Tune, and he also does a lot of cartooning workshops. He's an educator, um, as well as I'm an educator too. I'm a certified teacher in uh, New York City, in New York State. So what we've done, I created a comic clubhouse, he created Get In Tune, and we now go and bring the educational portion of literacy and reading to kids at comic conventions. Um, yeah, so I mean, everything's combined. Comic books are an excellent way for kids to learn how to read and be creative so we teach them what they need to do to do that so um, what I want to I absolutely love anything that encourages uh, kids to like write read explore um, just explore the world in general um, so when you're when you're sort of dealing with the kids and you're working with I guess how to teach them, what do you think is a I guess the most difficult aspect of that of that part because nowadays I just see kids either they're not interested in books they either run or they're like very heavily into it. So how do you sort of manage the middle ground? Um, I think one of the hardest things that the kids face is trying to come up with their own ideas. Um, because as soon as we like put a paper in front of them, they're like, oh, I'm gonna draw Spider-Man or I'm gonna draw My Little Ponies and stuff. And it's like, well, that's cool, but create your own thing, you know? So they may take some things that they've learned from other things that they've watched and combine that in and make their own characters. And then creating their own stories, explaining what goes into a character, what their motivation is, what does the character look like, what are their powers, how do they get the powers, what do they use their powers for, it could be good, it could be evil. So it's just get really game to focus on that whole creative side. A lot of kids don't have the opportunity to be creative now because a lot of it is video games and YouTube and things like that. So kids really aren't out there drawing and playing with action figures anymore, creating their own stories. So this is what we're trying to do and give them that opportunity to be creative. Keeping the imagination alive. So. Um What's your favorite character that uh, you've created here now? My favorite character I've created. Hmm, that's a tough one. Um, well, I have a book called Life's a Beach. Um, and, oh, here it is. Someone's. Thank you. Oh my God. Life's, Life's a Beach. So, uh, this character here, um, so my buddy Gary Eckerson, he's the artist on this, and I wrote the book. So, his name is Snugs. Um, and uh, the whole point of... I have another question after you explain this. Uh, are you going to ask the... Are you going to ask his... Or, well, well I, there's a... There's so... Up in New Paltz, New York, it's a college town, so New Paltz is there. There was a bar named Snugs, and I always thought that name was funny. So I said, if I ever made a movie or a cartoon or something, I would create a character named Snugs. And um, if you can see on the picture here, it says free hugs because um, he's kind of like a a player and he goes around and offers free hugs from Snugs to all the girls on the beach. And so he's a little bit of Screech, a little bit of uh, Ralph Mouth, a little bit of Shaggy. <clears throat> so yeah, so he's probably my favorite character. <laughs> um, he sounds like a very fun character to me. Um, so when you're... Uh, I, I, Okay, so like I'm a writer as well, and I've tried, you know, dabbling in writing my own comic book and stuff. So a lot of times people are often uh, looking for like tips, like, oh man, what should I do? Everyone's always looking for like, I guess, a step by step, and there really is no step by step. It's just a matter of just doing it. Um, but for you per se, um, when you're writing it yourself, publishing, once you get it done, it's done. You can always get it published. But what did you find to be the most hardest uh, character to create or develop? Um, in your writing process? Um, not so much the character, it's just um, the structure of the story from beginning to to the end. You know, because it's it's a constant changing. You know, because as you're writing, you're like, oh, this would be a cool idea. Even, this is our first issue here, and there were things that we thought of when we created these characters a couple of years ago, that now it's like two years later, and we're like, oh, let's do this now with these characters. Stuff we didn't even think about, and original ideas that we had, we're like chucking out the door now and now introducing new things. Like I'm going to do a, uh, 
a monster beach party where monsters come there and it wasn't anything that we were thinking of doing originally but I said let's be silly and do something like that break out the monster mash uh, <laughs> um, so now the program the, the way that you're teaching these kids what are some of the methods that I guess you use to uh, guide the kids so they can have their own comic like life's a beach because um, everyone does a di everyone has a different writing method everyone has a different teaching method and since you are an educator you do have that strong background for you um, what what's your uh, I guess your your most common method to use um, well we always start with the character um, if the kids want to sketch out the character, they'll do that oftentimes first. And then from those sketches, we'll talk about what it is, like we said earlier, what it, what it is that character looks like, and why do they look that way, what are the powers, etc. And then, you know, really developing the storyline, you know, how they got those powers, and now what are they going to do with those, and even the people that are around them. A lot of it is outlining and just planning out things, um, you know, in the, in the school where I work every day, um, we use graphic organizers, and a lot of teaching the kids is just like graphic organizers, you know, creating like a tree of like all these different thoughts and bubbles, and just be like this is what we're going to do now to guide you on what you're doing. I wish I had you as a teacher. I think that sounds so flipping cool. Um, <laughs> you know, my teacher was just very like boring. I, I probably would have been a student you liked because I was doing a lot of drawing and creating my own stories, and they're like, hey. I'm talking and I'm like, yeah, yeah, I heard you, George Washington, and yeah, okay. So, did you see this character I just drew? Like, I was very much into that. <laughs> um, but growing up for yourself, um, what comics or characters do you did you find that yourself that you're uh, very inspired by? Is it Batman? Is it Archie? You know, like, I mean, what would you say your inspiration is? Oh, I gave him. He's like, mm, damn her in that question. Well, no, no, no. So a lot of my inspiration for characters comes from the Hanna Barbera world. Um, definitely all like the Henson stuff, the Muppets, um, and then like, well, I mean, Life's, Life's a Beach really is like the Frankie and Annette movies, it's Happy Days, so like a lot of those like goofy old things from like the 60s and 70s. Which cartoon from Hanna Barbera? I mean, what are we talking about here? Like Penelope Pitstop, Huckleberry Hound, I mean, what are we doing? We could do, we could do like a whole podcast on Hanna Barbera, <laughs> my god. I mean, no, all, 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 I mean, they're all goofy and cheesy and stuff like that, but they're great. Like I like Grape Ape. Captain Caveman we were talking about earlier, I mean... Like I, you kids who don't know, look him up and then run around your house saying Captain Caveman. It's very important. Please, run off and go do it. Your mom your mom will smile for a second, but then you continuously do it and then see what happens after. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, yeah, they, they're... Yeah, kids, look up Hanna-Barbera. So uh, they're underappreciated and, you know, like, unfortunately... Maybe they'll come back, all these characters, at some point in time, but yeah. Well, they're bringing back a, a lot of stuff. Um, they didn't bring back the Wacky Races, but I did hear that Penelope Pit Stop. <gasps> it is? Yeah. I only heard about Penelope Pit Stop, and that she's, she's now more... And I think it's on Cartoon Network now, too. The new Wacky Races. Obviously, I'm going to be downloading that very soon, because I need to go back. Not that Warner Brothers will send us any free copies, I'm sure, but um, there's a, a, a new Wacky Races DVD that's out. So... My favorite was Dastardly. I loved him so much. <laughs> I was like, I was always rooting for him. <laughs> like, I needed them. And then I heard that they changed Penelope Pitstop, where she's a little bit more, I guess, female empowerment, and that there's there's no Ant Hill mob gang. And I'm like, that yeah, that kind of bothers me. And I'm like, that what's the whole point? She's she's they're supposed to come in. You get the hooded claw and everything else. There's, there's a whole set to it. Um, in regards to comics, who's your favorite? Comic characters. See, I bought when I was a kid. I bought all the, like the Hanna Barbera based comics. I bought Alf. I bought Archie. I live for Alf. I'm sorry. No, I, yeah, no, I bought I bought like an, anything that was on like a Saturday morning cartoon, with the except I mean, but Archie was a Saturday morning cartoon. But anything now, anything that was like, oh, cool, this is on Saturday mornings, like Count Duckula or Alf or what else today? They, there's a Flintstone Kids comic, Foofer. You know, like Marvel did a lot of those books. I just bought all those comics. I was like, I'll read what I'm watching on TV. I love you so much for mentioning Alf. <laughs> like, you have no idea. I live for I, I still have the stuffed animal. Oh my, god. oh, my God. We're twinsies. We got besties. And there's somebody downstairs that has the figurines from the cartoon. If you don't have those, they had Alf and Rick downstairs. Wait, what booth? Right down there by the store. 
I'll show okay, you. Okay, obviously, I'm going to go over there. Um, <laughs> um, so for those who are looking, they want to like, you know, okay, I want to get Life's a Beach and kind of, you know, maybe relate to it. Maybe there's a Snugs out there who needs some hugs. Uh, <laughs> and Or they want their kids to get involved and kind of learn the process of creating their own characters because imagination is the most important thing in life. And it sounds like a typical artist's answer or creative person's answer. But the truth is, everything that we have, some creative wacko came up with the idea. So we need our imagination so send them over here let Mike um, you know teach teach the kids and show them like hey if I can create this character maybe they'll create something that we'll need in the future so where can they find you um, it is on Indie Planet Life's a Beach um, so you can go on Indie Planet and you'll find that on there and they have, the next couple of issues will be on there as well and then on Facebook it's Life's a Beach Comics I think it's Beach Comics it's listed as Beach Comics 2015 but if you google Life's a Beach you should be able to find it and then you can also find Comic Clubhouse which is our get in tune with Comic Clubhouse on Facebook and the other thing uh, plug that I'll do we do a, a drink and draw monthly up in the Hudson Valley so Hudson Valley drink and draw you can also find and that's all Grazi and myself as well drink and draw like am I drinking milk or am I drinking adult milk uh, adult milk oh <laughs> they're for kids and adults not, not, not the milk luke skywalker was drinking in last jedi no commentary no commentary <laughs> thank you so much make sure you guys check out life's the beach because god knows life can be and have your kids learn a little bit more about being creative and using their imagination to their fullest i mean you're talking um you're watching a video of a girl whose father gave her a stick and some mud it was like Figure it out, um, which my mom hated. Um, thank you so much. Bye.